Hey y'all, my name is Miranda Hughes. Welcome back to my channel. It's so great to have you guys. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've been here for a while, it's great to have you and see you again. Um, I'm just going to jump into this. The song that God gave me today is I Will Always Return, and it's by Brian Adams. Um, this is actually from a movie, and it's called Spirit, the Stallion of Cimarron. Um, I went and saw this movie when I was a child, probably like, I don't know, anywhere between 8 and 12 years old. Like, I was like real little. And I absolutely love this movie. I still, I actually have a copy on DVD. And I've had it for as long as I can remember. Um, I don't watch it a whole lot, but I do watch it every once in a while. And um, God was putting this in my spirit. And so I got super excited because I know what it means. Um, this song right here is just, I mean, it speaks for itself. I really don't have scriptures for it. Uh, God didn't give me any of that. It was just more of a... This is how your person or your prodigal is feeling and um, what they're thinking and what they're going through at this time before they um, reach out to you. And uh, yeah, it's just it gets me excited. So I hope it'll excite you too. Um, again, please check in with God to make sure this is for you and make sure that this is your season. Because if it is, get excited because <laughs> right at the brink, right there. Um, again, I printed this off July, Friday, July 28th of 2023. So I've been sitting on it for a little bit and we're finally here at it. I'm so excited. And again, I don't have any scripture, but, uh, this is just a reflection of what God is, or not a reflection of God, but a reflection of your person as far as what they are thinking and reflecting on with God. So, again, the song is called I Will Always Return. It's by Brian uh, Adams. And let's get into it. So, it starts off like this. I hear the wind call your name. It calls me back home again. It sparks up the fire, a flame that still burns. Oh, it's to you. I'll always return. So, yeah, there's still a spark there. Like, that fire is not completely destroyed. It's not completely put out, like... A lot of us had thought it was like your person still had memories of you they still um, thought about you they still um, I actually did a song I think it was a uh, thing was by George Strait and it was uh, carrying your love with me um, I forgot to actually post that one down below so if I can find it um, I will try to update that later today um, I'm pulling an all-nighter for this one because like I said I have just a couple more songs to do, and I finally hit, um, I don't even know what to say. I wouldn't really say a milestone, but I just, I hit a goal that I was trying to get to for the longest time, because as you know, life, um, or power, I don't know, what is it? Power falls between the life and death on the, on the tongue, something like that. Sorry, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, like I said, I'm really tired, but anyways, uh, a lot of the things that we're speaking about, you know, life or death, like um, speaking life into things over us or speaking death, death, yeah, death or negativity. Um, so that's why I'm excited to talk about these words, because as I give them to you guys, it still, for the most part, applies to me, too. Um, I've been on this journey just like you guys have been, and that's why I'm super excited. Even if I don't look it right now, I'm tired, but I'm telling you, oh, my gosh, like... <laughs> This song and the next one are actually back to back. They're from the mov the movie Spirit, and um, I don't think YouTube offers the free um, movie. I think you will have to buy or rent it, but um, you definitely want to if you haven't yet. It is a it's a kids film, but you can enjoy it like adults can. Um, it's easy for all ages to understand what's going on. Um, it's just overall a really great movie. But anyways, this is a song that's done by Brian Adams from the movie. And um, yeah, so when it's talking about like, I hear the wind call your name. So it's like, um, God has not let them forget about you. Like God allows your person to still be able to hear um, the purpose in your name, to still uh, recognize that when it says it calls me back home again, like you kind of represent home to your person. 
Um, or if, if not home, you like feel like home to them. Um, you're just going to provide that feeling of security and that feeling of like you guys have known each other for a very long time. Um, it sparks up the fire, a flame that still burns. So what started as a spark is now becoming a flame. Like they're just, they're really, and it's not the burning with passion in a way that's bad. Um, this is why God is having you guys get married because, excuse me, I guess there is a Bible verse. It is better to marry than to burn with passion. So um, your person has a flame for you still. Like they still have that spark and that flame to reignite, to get to know you, to, um, you know, start things over and just kind of, you know, pick up where you guys left off, but to do things differently and betterly. Uh, betterly. I can't even talk. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Better. Um, the next part is, oh, it's to you. I'll always return. So, yeah, they're always going to return back to you. Um, just like God says that if you train a child up in the way that they should be taught, that they'll never depart from it. Um, in a way, it's like the love that you and your person have. Um, you know, it's meant to last. It's meant to stay strong. It's meant to withstand anything that, it, you know, comes up against it. And that's why it doesn't matter really if you guys get into fights, arguments, disagreements. It doesn't matter what tries to come up against you guys. You guys will always return back to one another because you guys are truly meant to be together. You really are. The next part is, I still feel your breath on my skin. I hear your voice deep within. The sound of my lover, a feeling so strong. See, I just talked about that. Oh, it's to you. I'll always belong. So you feel like home to them. Um, they feel like they belong with you. They have a sense of belonging and they just, um, the part where it says the sound of my lover feeling so strong. Um, you guys have a very strong connection. You guys are really, you know, able to sense each other in the spirit. You're able to, um, pray over one another and be able to kind of identify if the other one is, you know, experiencing a certain emotion or certain like thoughts, um, Sometimes the thoughts and emotions we have are actually connected to our spouse. Um, it's just that strong. And also the bond that you guys have, just like loving one another. You know, God created that desire for both of you to have that kind of strong desire. Um, not just to be att attracted to one another, but to truly love one another. To have that God-like love within each other. Um, I hear your voice deep within. So... Your person is hearing God's voice, like they're being led by the Holy Spirit, so it's not a joke, it's not um, their own will, it's, um, I mean, they're choosing to, God's will, and yes, they want to be with you, and they want God, but, you know, they're being led, like, the, they're being led by the Holy Spirit, just like you are, and um, they're thinking about times when you've encouraged them, or maybe that you've said something that just really inspired them. And so they're just, um, they're thinking about you and the things that you've said. And deep down within, that's what's kind of motivating and encouraging them to continue with the journey of getting to back to you. Um, I also, let's see. No, I already said that. I already did a video on uh, carrying your love with me. Let's see. The next part is now I know it's true. Yeah. My every road leads to you. And in the hour of darkness, darling, your light gets me through. Okay. So with this part, um, your person just saying it's true. Like they really do love you. They really do have a sense of belonging to you. Um, they really want what you have and what you have going on with your life with God. They want to be a part of that and they want to have experienced God for themselves and build a life with you based off of that foundation. Um, my every road leads to you. So I did link down in the description. There is, uh, I think it was, um, was it broken road or, uh, bless the broken road by rascal flats. I did do a song on that not too long ago. I think it was five months ago. And, um, so your person has come to terms with that. They realize that it doesn't matter who they're talking to or dating or trying to get to know it's not going to end well. It's going to blow up in their face or it's just going to be a disaster or it's going to go nowhere like a dead end. It's, um, that road doesn't lead to anything else. And the only thing that they have noticed that it leads to is it goes right back to them thinking about you, wondering about you. God's convicting them, letting them know that, Hey, I told you not to get into that relationship. I told you that's not where you need to be. 
um, after they went and did it. He's telling it to them gently, of course, but um, he's just letting them not get off the get off the hook too easily. And so now whenever they try to do something or they had done something in the past, um, trying to take a different route to love or a different route to having a family, um, 10 times out of 10, it would just end up being them thinking about you all over again. There'd be something that they saw on your social media, or maybe they heard your name. Maybe um, they saw an advertisement of yours. Um, they could have ran into somebody who also knows you and knows your person as well. Um, all kinds of things. Like God has so many, uh, str I don't even know, strategic, I don't even know. He has strategies and strategic ways. I don't know why I couldn't say that word. I'm sorry. Strategic ways of being able to get you guys to continue to think about one another and not forget about the other person. Um, I know it seems easier on your end to not forget about your person because you are all about this relationship. You've been waiting patiently for it and you're, you know, suffering for it and you're just, you're waiting on God to bring this together. Your person, um, you know, they... They actually, it's true, they really do want to be with you and they want to make it right. And um, they've had to do some waiting, like they're just kind of waiting on God as far as when to approach you, what to say kind of thing, but they're definitely um, in it too. The next part is, and in the hour of darkness, darling, your light gets me through. So I actually did a video talking about um, Ships in the Night by Matt Carney, I think is his name. It was talking about you kind of representing being like a light, like a lighthouse and how your light's like shining out into the darkness, into the abyss, and they're attracted to it. Like your person is attracted to your godliness, uh, your righteousness. They're attracted to your standards and your self-respect, the way you carry yourself, um, how you handle day-to-day -day situations, and you do it, you know, a godly way instead of a worldly way. Um, you stand out from the rest and out of people in this dark world and the dark of everything the light coming off of you and that light is a reflection of Jesus Christ and so that's what's pulling them in and then the next part says want to swim in your river be warm by your sun bathe in your waters because you are the one you're it you're the one you're the one they want to come back to you're the one they want to build a life with you're the one they want to do um, anything with you're the one that they want to make memories with you are the one that they want to be married to and that they are 100% certain now that they've had a good taste of the world and what it has to offer and that it isn't offering much and the people that they were involved in were just, they were not a good fit. They were not, um, I don't even know. They were just, uh, they just weren't suit the best suitable partner for the, for your person the way that you are. And as they've had time to reflect on this, um, acknowledge this and kind of God revealed a lot to them about it. They understand now why God was telling them that they need to go with you because even if they haven't experienced you fully yet and you haven't with them, um, they understand that it's enough anyways to the point that if they don't do life with you, then they're not going to be happy. Like as in they'll be okay, like they'll be all right, but they're not going to be as happy as they could be if they were to please God and go follow his will and go where he told them to go, which is to go be with you. Um, same thing like with, with us, you know, like we, if we jump off course and we decide to go be with someone else because we're impatient, like you'll be okay, but it's not going to be fulfilling. Like even if you had sex with that person, it's like, yeah, you'll get that need met, but you're not going to feel satisfied because you might end up with an STD. You might get pregnant. You might, um, you know, end up feeling more emptiness than you did going into the relationship, you know, and so God's trying to help you avoid that. So if you just tough it out and you stick it out till the end with God, um, he's not a man that shall lie. So he's going to bring this together. You and your person will be able to be reunited and it's going to be beautiful, wonderful, a big blessing. It's going to be larger than you ever expected or imagined it to be. And it's just going to be, I don't know, just better than you ever imagined. Okay, Ephesians 3.20. Um, so I guess we are getting some scripture in here today because, like, I didn't really have anything when I was asking him about it for the last, I don't even know, 
this is from July, so I've been <laughs> sitting on it for a while, and I'm like, God, I really don't know what would go with this. Um, but I'm really glad that he's bringing some up, so thank you, Abba. Um, this part right here, I can't stand the distance, I can't dream alone. I can't wait to see you, yes, I'm on my way home. I'm on my way. So, again, like, guys, I'm not <laughs> kidding, like... God's not playing with you and neither am I. Like, your person is determined to get back to you, okay? And they don't care if they're crawling back to you. They don't care if they are, you know, sitting outside your front door, if they have to call your workplace, if they have to send you flowers. They don't care if they have to, um, you know, like for some people, maybe possibly get a hold of a family member or friend to reach out to you, Um if they're checking to see, not everyone is going to go through that, but just a select few on that one. But my point is, is that your person is trying to get to you. They're trying to reach you. They don't care if they got to snail mail you, um, set up a meeting with you. If you own a business or something, just to talk to you, like, and if they got to pay something, they will like, they are willing to do anything. Okay. Um, for some of you guys, if you're a doctor or a dentist, they might even set up an appointment and be like, hey, I need this and just like sneak in that way, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know why God's saying that, but, um, that would be kind of funny actually. Yeah. I don't know. Um, my person, I don't think is a doctor or anything and I know I'm not, so I don't know who that's for, but anyways, the point is, is that your person's on their way home. God's not joking that get ready in whatever way he's told you to prepare. Um, your person can't stand the distance. Like they can't take it no more. They're like, I need time with you. I need to get to know you all over again, or I need to get to know you period. Um, you know, like if they have to move closer to you, they're willing to do so. Like they're not going to be stubborn anymore. Like they're willing to do whatever it takes to be closer to you. Um, I can't dream alone. So this goes for two things, like not just dreaming as far as like um, what they want in life, but also like what it is that God's called you guys to do together. Like they can't do this promise alone. They can't dream alone. They can't, um, you know, build a business by themselves or a ministry by themselves. If it's supposed to be a business or ministry that both of you guys are supposed to be partners with and be involved in. Uh, they need the other half. They need the other part of the, the piece, um, the missing piece for that. And again, no one's going to be able to take your place and you're not going to be able to take anyone else's place either, like your person's. Um, they can't wait to see you. Like they're actually excited. This is why God wants you to shift your mindset because um, they are excited to see you. They're nervous because they don't know what you're going to say or how you're going to react when you see them or talk to them. But they're excited to just, you know, the idea of getting to make things right with you, the idea of being able to make their amends with you. Um, the next part is, um, let's see, what is it? Sorry, y'all. Okay, I've already said the other things. Um, the very last part of this is I've seen every sunset and with all that I've learned, oh, it's to you, I will always, always return. So when it says I've seen every sunset, it just means that they've seen a lot of things under the sun and they weren't satisfied. Like they've seen a lot, they've been through a lot and there just wasn't very much that was um, making them satisfied or happy. Um, the next part is, and with all that I've learned. So your person, again, they had to learn the hard way. They had to learn um, through living things out and experience. They had to learn through mistakes and failures and falling on their face they had to learn through being humbled by God and also learning how to humble themselves before God uh, which is a hard thing to learn and to do and they're saying after all of that <laughs> after all the trouble I caused after all the pain that I caused um, meaning to you and to others um, and even to themselves uh, after everything that they had gone through they officially you know understand and recognize and realize that it's to you that they will always always return like any of these other relationships you know I don't know about y'all but I've had someone that was considered a kind of like an ex but just someone that I did have um a fling with excuse me and he uh 
I don't know, like, I think 2019 was the last time that him and I talked or whatever. And he was just wanting to, you know, pick things up where we left off. And it was just to, you know, have a fling. And I was just like, no, like, I have too much respect for us. I don't think we should do that. And he was trying to come over to my apartment. And again, this was a year before I met my spouse. And I told him, I was like, I will meet you in a restaurant or somewhere out in public, but not at my apartment. And he did not want to do that. Well, then, lo and behold, just a couple weeks ago, like literally less than a month ago, um, he reached back out to me. Yeah. So in 2023, so it was like four years later and he still, he came back, but this time he came back differently. Like he came back. Uh, just sending me a friend request on Facebook instead of messaging me through Snapchat. Um, he didn't say a word about hooking up or trying to pick up where we left off. It was like this time, it's like he understood that if he came back, he's going to have to come back, you know, as a man, not a boy. He's going to have to be able to, um, you know, I don't know how to, else to say it. He's just going to have to be more respectful, I guess, in his approach to adding me back into his life. However... I know that that's not my husband, so I'm not going to tell him that. Um, if I had to, I would, but, like, God just told me just don't even open the door. Like, just don't even, don't accept his friend request. Just silently, politely delete it, and that's that. Um, and like I said, I he hasn't blown up my phone. He hasn't done anything super crazy or weird. Um, so I think, pretty sure he got the picture, but that's what I'm saying is, like, even with the counterfeits, like, they're going to have to have a different approach when they come back. So if it goes that way for a counterfeit, just imagine how it's going to be for the real deal. The real person. The real god spouse. Like, when they come back in your life, like, they're not going to come at you in player mode. They're not going to come back at you um, with revenge and regret um, and trying to get even with you. They're not going to come back at you um, just to be nosy and then ghost you again. Like, no, these people, your person is going to come back with a sincere heart, a heart for God, and a desire to get to, tr to truly get to know you and a desire to truly start over with you. Um, they're going to be building it from the ground up. So um, it's not entirely where you guys left off. Like, you're starting completely over. Like, y'all are going to have to go on, some of you guys might go on dates or, um, you know, you guys might talk about living conditions if you guys were married at one point um it's not gonna it's gonna be fast but not sudden if that makes sense like you're gonna have to have a moment where you guys sit down and kind of talk things out a little bit and whether that's online somehow so through social media if it's over the phone if it's um in person however it's done the point is is that you guys have to address um, where y'all stand as far as standards and boundaries go and um, your person may want to apologize to you and like I said they may want to take you out to eat or they may just want to talk to you in a park they may want to um, sit in your car and just talk to you guys and you or talk to you and you guys just sit there for like I don't know four or five hours talking in the car you guys might go to a mall and just walk around you guys might um go to a cafe like it could be something small or something big it could be out in the open it could be any way like I don't know how it's going to go for you so that's why you're going to have to pray to God and you'll know more than I do in regards to your situation but what I do know is that your person um they've learned a lot since they've been away from you and they've learned enough to where they've matured quite a bit um they're not the same person that you remember them by. They're not the same person. They're not going to treat you the same way that they did before. They're not going to treat you just any kind of way. They have to come back. And when they do come back, it's going to have to be respectful, polite. It's going to have to be considerate. And it's going to have to be obviously in God's timing. But um, they're going to go at your pace. They're not going to try to push or shove um, any ideas at you, it's just, uh, they might present an idea to you of what they would like, um, just putting it out on the table, but in a way, they're going to go at your pace. If you don't feel comfortable with something, they're going to be like, okay, you know what, we don't have to do that yet, um, if that's too fast, um, 
So I don't know if that helps you guys or not, but your person is telling you that you are the real deal. You're it. They want to come back to you. They mean what they say. Um, out of all the relationships that they had, they have no desire to return to anybody else. You are the only one that is constantly on their mind, constantly. Um, God is kind of, you know, poking them and being like, remember that person. Remember um, the plans that I told you about this person. Remember that um, what I told you I need you to do with this person. Um or it could just be, hey, I need you to go ask them on a date or I need you to go talk to them. I need you to make that phone call, that whatever. Um, however, God is leading them. But all in all, like God just wants you to know that your person is very sincere about this and about you. And, you know, they've come a long way and they're just they're ready to do life with you. They really are. And that's why it doesn't matter. Like even once they come back into your life, if you guys... If it's a little awkward maybe in the beginning or just just a, an adjustment period or something where maybe it's a couple weeks of you guys not really knowing what to say or how to kick things off. Um, just because you guys are both afraid of hurting each other's feelings. like um, As in you guys don't want to say the wrong thing kind of thing. The point is, is God's going to lead and guide you guys no matter what. Your person is um, very positive that it is you that they love and want to return to and that they um even if you guys had a little misunderstanding when they do come back um they're always going to return back to you like they're going to return your phone calls they're going to return your emails they're going to make it up to you if they miss a date or something like and they just got scared or they just needed to collect themselves for whatever reason um <clears throat> It's just, it's going to be different, okay? It's just going to be way different than what you either A, imagined, or B, what you're expecting based off of how they treated you in the past. But your person is always going to return back to you. Um, it says, my every road leads to you. So God's making sure that, you know, you know, man plans his way, but God directs his steps. And the steps that he keeps giving your person is to continuously lead them back to God and to you. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, I hope y'all get excited for this. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Hi, JD. Yes, I would love some coffee. <laughs> but I haven't gone to bed yet, so I should probably go to bed after. I got two more videos, guys. Two more. Y'all pray for me. Like I said, like, you'll understand why once I release these videos, why I'm pulling through like this. Any other time, I would just be like, you know what, God, I'll deal with it tomorrow. But today, I was like, you know what, I need to push through a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, like that was, I will always return. It is by Brian Adams and it's off the movie Spirit, The Stallion of Cimarron. It is a great movie. If y'all haven't seen it, you might have to buy or rent it off of Google if you have access to that. If not, check it out in a library if you can get a hold of one. Um, or see if you can borrow it from someone if they have it, like someone with kids. <laughs> um, I believe. I don't know if it's a Disney movie. It might be. I don't know. I know it's animated. But anyways... I love you guys. I hope you have a great day, night, wherever you're at. And if you haven't yet, give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so, so you don't miss a single one of my videos. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.